what's going on guys it's omniarch and today i'm bringing you a brand new video where i'm going to be going over osman the first in rise of kingdoms now i've gotten a decent amount of messages from people asking me about osman the first and it's kind of been a little bit surprising because to me it's not a commander that i talk about a lot um and it's not a commander that i personally really use so to me it was a little bit interesting but i guess it it shouldn't be that surprising right because if you look at osman his skills are pretty straightforward to understand like they're pretty you know it's easy to understand the concept behind osman and he also doesn't really care about a specific troop type so that's probably really attractive to some of the newer players to the game who can't fill an entire army with a specific troop type um and you know it's easy to see like big damage numbers you think okay he must be good because big damage right before we get into some cool things that you can do with osmond the first we have to talk about how do you actually get him if you guys are new to the game and you don't have osmond the first yet um you get him by default if you started with the ottoman empire so if that was your starting civilization then osmond the first was the first commander that you got you also can get osmond sculptures from silver chests and you can get osman summons and sculptures from the golden chest you can also find osman in the expedition metal store he comes around they change the epics every week or so and uh eventually he'll show up here as the epic commander of the week you can also find him in these refresh chances down here and you can of course turn your universals into him and there are specific events just for osman the first and the ottoman empire civilization so there's tons of ways that you can get osman the first and eventually after playing the game for a while you'll have pretty much all the epics expertise so with that being said let's talk about Osman the first now if you look he is uh, one of the lower uh, leveled epic commanders that I have because I haven't really invested in him too much I was originally gonna start using him in the early game and then I kind of abandoned that idea because I started to fill armies with um, with a specific troop type so let's go ahead and take a look at what his skills do so his first skill is called rising Empire what you're looking at here is the expertise version so if we look at the regular version it says strikes a powerful blow with the sword of Osman dealing massive damage damage factor of 850 to the target so super straightforward right he does a big damage factor to one target there's no buffs debuffs there's no cooldowns there's no nothing fancy it's just boom big damage to one target second skill is called radiance of versa this says after attacking a city for more than 30 seconds increases troop attacked by 15 for the for a duration of 120 seconds so this is basically you get a 15 percent uh, troop attack buff for two minutes i don't really like this skill that much because i don't really think you should be rallying cities with osman um, maybe in the early game in if he's like expertise and he's your only option then sure perhaps that's a good a good idea right but typically you should be rallying cities with the strongest player in your alliance leading the rally with expertise legendary commanders that's the best thing that you should be doing when rallying cities so and osman the first isn't that great for rallying cities unfortunately um however you know the other thing too is you, you have to be hitting the city for 30 seconds in order to get this this buff and i just feel like that's a long time to be rallying a city for uh you know for a buff like that i don't know it to me this is not that great of a skill not that much utility it also only works for cities so you can't like use this against flags or fortresses or anything like that so i don't like this skill i think if you're going to level him up i would say get this skill to uh five then i would bring him all the way to four stars just bring him all the way to four stars right we can skip this one his third skill is called sword of osman and this says after an active skill is used deals additional damage with a damage factor of 450 to the target on the next turn so this is cool right because this kind of just plays off of his primary skill where he does big damage and then it activates his passive skill where he'll do smaller damage on the next turn so that's pretty cool his fourth skill is Sultan's glory. It just says increases troop capacity by 10%. So he is the only, uh, he's this, the one of two Epic commanders in the Epic tier that increases troop capacity besides Scipio. So that's really interesting to know. He brings more troops to the battlefield. So that's a uh, pretty good to have on a commander. And then his expertise raises that 850 damage factor to 1100. So a nice solid buff there, but it doesn't add any sort of debuffs or any troop enhancements or anything like that. So he is a very vanilla commander. He is good at dealing large single target damage factor dealing additional damage factor afterwards 
and bringing more troops to the battlefield now the interesting to know is that the cool part about sword of osman is that after an active skill is used it will be triggered so it doesn't say that it will trigger after osman's active skill it says after any active skill so after an active skill is used it deals an additional 400 damage factor which is really really cool so the idea with osman is to play on his strength of dealing lots of damage factor and the way that you can do that is by increasing the number of times that sword of osman goes off right because every time an active skill is used you get this bonus damage factor of 400 so if you can pop off a lot of active skills you're going to get a lot of this passive damage factor of 400 which is really cool another thing that's great about that is that osman does have the skill tree so he can actually get the rage regeneration from feral nature and from rejuvenate which is really really cool so the more rate the more rage regeneration that you have the more active skills you're going to set off and the more active skills you set off the more sort of osmonds you're going to set off which is really really awesome so that's really how osmond works you want to focus on skill damage and so when we're considering who should we pair osmond with we have to take that into account right because other than that he doesn't really do much right like yeah he brings more troops to the field but he's not buffing them in any way he's not protecting them in some way with a shield like there's really nothing that osmond does other than bring some more troops and deals a lot of single target damage factor so i think if you're going to use osmond uh you should pair him with somebody that will be able to pump out a ton of skill damage uh over and over and over again right that's really the only way to use him in my opinion and so we have to take a look at what epic commanders uh could you pair him with to to accomplish that goal well the first one that comes to mind for me is Boudica. She is another commander that does not care what troop type you bring to the battlefield. She is a completely universal commander. She also does a nice single target damage factor. Plus, she also has some debuffs. She decreases the enemy target's rage by 100. She decreases their attack by 25% for two seconds. She also restores rage. So this plays really, really well into what we're looking for with Hasman, which is generating as much rage as possible. So she restores 50 rage and heals some slightly wounded units in her army whenever she uses a skill. So anytime one of her skills goes off, she'll restore 50 rage. So the more rage we get, the more skills go off, the more that this passive will be activated and the more rage will be regenerated. So it's kind of cyclical in that way, um, which is really, really awesome. With that being said, I think an Osman primary Boudicca secondary would be a pretty decent early game uh, mixed army, right? Because the reason you want Osman as primary is because I think personally the leadership tree is better than Boudicca's integration tree. I just think that you just get some better talents there. But of course, if your Boudicca is way higher level than your Osman, maybe you want to use her uh, as your primary. That's something that you could do as well. The other pairing that I would consider in the epic tier for Osman would be Sun Tzu. Now, of course, Sun Tzu uh, is technically infantry, but he doesn't really care too much about what troops he brings with him. He does have a really excellent rage engine here with Art of War. So you could potentially gain up to 250 rage when Art of War goes off. Um, if you're in a big battle where you're hitting multiple targets so sun tzu would be a really great pairing as well on top of that he's also buffing the active skill damage by that osman does so osman's 1100 is instantly buffed by 20 percent because sun tzu came along with him um with this pair you could either do sun tzu primary or osman primary the cool thing about having osman primary is that you do have the leadership tree and what i'm gonna do here is i'll show you how i would build osman um if you are going to be using him in the open field as a primary the first thing that i would do is come up and grab rejuvenate you're going to notice that that's a trend with skill damage commanders rejuvenate to me is the best uh talent that you can get if you have a skill damage commander because it instantly will give you 60 rage anytime a skill is used which is awesome so i would come up and make my way up to rejuvenate now we can take a look here at clarity which says after using an active skill increase the skill damage by six percent for the next six seconds which is really really cool now this doesn't specify whether it's active skill damage or additional skill damage i don't know it doesn't say i haven't done the testing for this i i think because it's vague it would apply to additional skill damage but it, again it the way that it's worded is very vague so I am under the impression that this boosts all skill damage, not just active, but also additional. If that's being the case and going by that logic, I think clarity is a great talent to have 
because um, it will boost the Sword of Osman 400 addi additional damage factor even more. So I would recommend getting Rejuvenate and then making your way up to Feral Nature because you're going to grab Clarity along the way. Feral Nature will give you a 10% chance to grant additional Rage, which again is what we want for Osman to pop off as many skills as possible. I would then make my way over here to Fresh Recruits to get 3% extra troop capacity, which is great because Osman already brings 10% more. So now you bring even more than that, which is awesome. Then I would make my way over here to Latent Power, and this will enhance your additional skill damage by 6%. And again, the Sword of Osman um skill is going to be dealing additional skill damage and you're going to be trying to use that as much as possible right you want to use it over and over and over again and that six percent buff will stack uh, over time like it, the it'll make a difference over time throughout a battle with that being said i would then probably make my way up to strategic prowess because this says after using a skill increases troop defense by five percent for two seconds i believe it does go up to 20 percent at all four so you'll get a nice uh, a nice big defense buff once you have the active skills going off and again you're going to be using this a lot because the active skills should be going off pretty pretty uh, often next i would make my way over here to arm to the teeth because you're already here and it says when armies led by this commander contain three or more different unit types all damage dealt is increased by three percent because you'll have three points in here um with that being said i don't know how much more how many more points you would have at this point i would only have one more talent point left so i would probably put it in either steely soul or health to all troops something along those lines um it's really up to you what you do with that last point it won't make a huge difference in 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 any other way really it's a very small buff now the other benefit of going up the right side of the leadership tree is that you get hidden wrath which will generate uh, two rage every time this commander troops are attacked so you get even more rage regeneration there which is nice the only downside is that healing herbs will kind of be wasted unless you pair it with a commander that does do some healing so it's up to you uh, you will basically be wasting this you could go up the left side of the tree and instead of getting um this strategic prowess to capitalize on the defense buff for your active skills that are going off constantly you could try to grab close formation which will actually increase your attack by a significant amount i believe it's total of 10 uh 12 percent um when it's maxed out and that's only under 50 percent strength so it's up to you if you're going to be in the battle a lot and you know that your Osman is you're just going to fight till the death maybe close close formation would be good typically for me i try to not have my armies get too uh too low on troops um so how much you actually get use out of this would be you know up to you uh steely soul isn't that good either but i guess it's better than wasting the points on healing herbs so it's up to you um you could do either one this one is better for defense this one's better for offense i think you'll get more use out of strategic prowess just on an everyday basis um so that was kind of my logic with that one so make your way up to fresh recruits then make your way up to strategic prowess then grab arm to the teeth and then you have one point left over to do whatever you want with it it's up to you now if you really wanted to go all in on the additional damage factor you could pair him with kusunoki the only problem is that kusunoki really really does care about archer units he does specialize in archer units so that's something to consider um you may want to bring full archers if you do that but at that point i don't think that osman would be the best in a full archer build so it's kind of hard for me to recommend that but there is definitely synergy there with the additional damage factor of kusunoki's first skill as well as his fourth skill and he does do aoe so that's nice as well um there's a little bit of synergy there like i said but it's not crazy same thing with pelagius pelagius actually has some really decent rage regeneration here with his first skill he also deals a decent amount of additional damage factor just like osman so the additional damage factor will definitely stack up with pelagius as well um he does have some healing which will get use out of the talent that we put into osman for the healing factor um i remember it's like something about healing herbs it's right here healing healing herbs gives you a nine percent enhanced healing effect if it does go off for Pelagius so there is synergy there as well which is really really cool um the only problem again is that Pelagius does care heavily about cavalry and so if you build a full cavalry build is Osman the best choice for that I don't know probably not right probably not but that is technically something that you could do you could do a um a full infantry or i'm sorry a full cavalry build with pelagius and osman to really capitalize on the skill damage and additional damage factor but again i don't know if that's a great build that i could recommend personally i think the best options are with uh, boudica 
and Sun Tzu because they both restore some rage and they both don't really care what type of type of troops that you bring to the battlefield and they're also dealing some decent skill damage finally you could bring Scipio if you really wanted to bring as many troops as possible to the battlefield that's something that you could do um the only thing is Scipio doesn't do any skill damage so if we take a look here Sword of Osman will still go off after Scipio's active skill is used but the problem is this isn't doing that skill damage that we're capital capitalizing on with this skill tree with Osman so there's some synergy there as well because you're going to bring way more troops to the field you'll be way more tanky because you'll have Scipio's primary skill as well as his uh, secondary skill he just doesn't have any skill damage so that's something to consider so as you can see it's kind of hard to come up with a really great pairing for Osman the two that we talked about of Sun Tzu and Boudicca they're pretty good with anybody I think there's better uses for Sun Tzu than pairing him with Osman so that kind of makes that thought process not that great so Osman and Boudicca is going to probably be the best pairing that you could realistically do because you probably would be using Sun Tzu for something else probably paired with Ethel fled because she's also someone you can get as free to play and honestly a, a mixed army with Osman and Boudicca is not bad but it, it's really an early game pairing right and the thing is like the best commander that you could probably pair Osman with would be Genghis Khan because Genghis Khan's first two skills are really awesome firstly he does an insane amount of single target damage factor right he also requires less rage than most uh, almost all active skills out of anybody else right I think this is the cheapest active skill in the entire game by 50 points his second um, uh, second skill actually reduces the rage cost of active abilities by upwards of a hundred so this would actually only cost 850 um, so that's you know something to consider as well like Genghis Khan is probably going to be the one that pumps out the most damage um, for a single target skill damage and that the problem with that is that a lot of people aren't gonna have access to Genghis Khan and on top of that is Osman really the best secondary to bring along with Genghis Khan you know maybe right maybe if all you care about is doing huge amounts of skill damage then yeah that could be a great pairing and so that's why you don't really see me using Osman very much because I struggle to find a use for him personally and so I can't really recommend him to you guys right um certainly in the early game I think there is is use for an Osman Boudicca pairing or Osman and somebody else with skill damage that we talked about in this video but once you get into the late game there's really not there's not at least unless there's a combo or strategy that I'm not aware of or I haven't seen I just don't see many players using Osman in the late game and I think it's because he's just very plain right he does big target damage factor um, but it's not it's not it's not up to the par of a legendary um, and there's other cool things that other epics can do that buff your commanders and your troops and things like that and so osman is kind of a one-trick pony and unfortunately um that kind of leaves him pigeonholed into a specific role and there's not that many other commanders in his in his tier that can capitalize on it really 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 well honestly i would want to pair osman the first with osman the first i feel like having two osman the firsts would be the best pairing you could do um and that's really frustrating because obviously that's not possible so you could play around with him with some of the recommendations that i made in this video if you have genghis khan at 5511 i would maybe give that a go test it out see how many skill uh, how much skill damage you pump out i think that would be a really interesting test to do Ishida is an interesting person to talk about right because he actually does increase speed of rage gain by 30 percent and he also will increase skill damage bonus by upwards of 15 percent so that's interesting it is only active skill damage but I don't see a scenario where somebody who has an expertise Ishida or at least a 5115 Ishida um would want to be using osman right it just doesn't it doesn't add up right it just doesn't add up um and plus ashita you're mainly going to be using for gathering anyway so yeah um if you have a 5115 ashita and you want to use osman primary with him give it a go see how it is i mean it may generate insane rage but that is speculation right because i don't have ashita expertise or a 5115 um, I think you would have to be incredibly lucky to get that uh, build on him. Uh, plus, again, would you really, like, you're really going to use him in the battlefield? I don't know. I don't know. Maybe that's a, a little secret anti-meta build you could try there and see how it goes. But that's kind of 
all that I can say about Osman the first. He does one thing pretty well. Uh, he just, I don't know if there's that much support for him, unfortunately. Um, in the early game, I can see players using him and I can see why he would be attractive and powerful and things like that. So, of course, like if it's early game for you and you find he's useful, absolutely give him a go. Um, if you guys have any other recommendations on how to use Osman or um, special builds with him or anything like that, drop them in the comment section below. I would love to hear some more creative ways to use him. I really tried to think about the best things that you could do with him, um, but. I do kind of struggle a little bit to come up with uh with a pairing that would make sense you know because again i could come up with a million pairings but the pairings that you're pairing him with the commanders you're putting with him they could probably be somewhere else a little bit better so with that being said guys hopefully you enjoyed the video if you did drop a thumbs up on the video i'd really really appreciate that again comment down below any questions you have about osman or special builds that you have as well subscribe if you're new around here and click that bell to be notified the next time that i upload a rise of kingdoms video as always my social media links are all in the description below head over there to check out any other content that i'm producing on those social media platforms and join my discord and follow me on twitch if you want to be notified anytime that i go live and upload videos those would be the best places to figure figure that out and with that being said guys thank you so much for watching this has been omniarch i will talk to you guys again soon peace